Stephen Swinney. I'm an illustrator, cartoonist, weird artist. Well, I'm just gonna do a pen and ink and um, add some watercolor afterwards. And uh, got a rough concept here from a sketchbook. Yeah, we can talk about materials first. Basically, it's a good idea to use decent paper that will last. And this is a 140 pound Canson watercolor paper. To me, it seems like cold press, which is bumpy. Hot press is smooth. And uh, this is from Walmart, actually. That's the cheapest place you can get it. Um, usually you can pay a lot more in an art supply store. That's a good brand, Canson. It's 140 pound weight, that's the weight, how thick the paper is. So it's durable. You don't want to work on crummy paper. You might sell it someday or you want it to last. It doesn't cost much more to have decent quality paper. And brushes, the best brushes are Winsor Newton Series 7. I don't have any of those right here. But these are just uh, brushes you can get at Michaels and other places that are pretty good, you know. But the best are Winsor Newton Series 7, which is a British, it's sable from horse's hair um, from their mane. I just found a shot glass here. I'll just put the ink in. I'll just put some ink. And I bought this years ago. This is a big thing of ink for like 13 bucks. It's lasting years instead of keep buying these little bottles. You could refill bottles with them. Brushes give you more, um, they give you more delineation of line, you know, uh, thickness. Um, no matter how much weight you put down on it, uh, you can go from very thin to very thick with a brush. You can't do that with a pen. Um, anyway, I like to work with line and then hit it with color later on. You could do color first and then go over it with uh, line or leave it just color, you know. It's like Kandinsky, he said that um, art is free, you know. It's, like, it's a great thing because it's free. There are no rules. Um, you do what you want. I have a rough concept here from a sketchbook I just opened up. Sketchbooks are good to keep, you know. Um, you get ideas in sketchbooks and you can go back to them or, or, or you could rework them. And this idea is like this guy, I heard this quote many, many years ago. An intellectual is someone whose brain, whose mind watches itself. Well, I don't think I'm intellectual, but it's good to be mindful about uh, your behavior. And he's just watching himself with his own brain here. <laughs> the eye, you know, it's good to start with an eye, like a pupil, and then work around it. I'll probably change the image a bit to make it interesting. But... I like to doodle a lot. This is working pretty bold here. You could work a lot, you know, you could use a rapidograph, um, 0004. Those are very, very um, fine. It's good to start bold if you can. And, um, Got a new pair of glasses right now. Not, they're not even that good. You could hit it with a wash too. This is an ink wash. It's easier with a watercolor wash, but you can get a half tone with uh, just diluting it like that. So it gives it some tone, some depth, some uh, volume to it. If you're trying to make it look representational. And later on, you put color on top of that if you want, or you can leave it black and white. But, um, yeah, it's good to have a testing piece of paper like this. I'm testing the line before I use it. That's, I think that's kind of essential. Uh, let's see. Eyeballs, people love eyeballs and skulls. <laughs> You'll find that in tattoos and images everywhere. You know, eyeballs are supposedly the universal um, 
symbol of wisdom and you know skulls are morality and death and all that but uh, could be spirituality they just look cool kids love them too I've taught kids for years at Callenwall uh, Fine Arts Center in Atlanta and uh, I like teaching kids The, um, you know, I, I like doing eyeballs a lot, I must say. <laughs> and when you show somebody smiling, it usually makes it more fun. I've done a lot of images where there's a lot of angst, in, <laughs> and that's got its place, but, uh, People like something smiling. Milton Glaser said once, if you add like another, uh, well, if you do an image and you add anything living in it, like a bird or a dog or a person, people are gonna relate to it more than just the landscape. I think he's right. But, you know, landscapes have their place. I like putting men in suits a lot because it gives them a little uniform. Magritte always did that, the Belgian surrealist. Um, yeah, ink washes, they get absorbed into the paper faster than a watercolor wash would, would be easier, to tell you the truth. Um, but I'm working with ink right now. But this paper is, um, now I can work with a bigger brush for a bigger area. And you could block in areas really fast with a brush. It would take you forever with a pen. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll put a little half tone in here, you know? And then uh, drop in a little watercolor or color. It's good to have a light source, like the light's coming from one place. It makes sense logically. Uh, the light would be coming from the left side, so all the shadows would drop to the right. You know, people like a little logic in images. It just, uh, but lighting is important. You can um, actually, you can accentuate different areas with lighting, you know. Focus the eye on certain things. And, uh, you know, just have fun with it. But you don't have to work this fast or anything. And I usually work a little bit slower, I think. I like to just make up stuff um, without a concept first, just doodle. But as an illustrator, I've always uh, been problem solving, but this is my own weird stuff. And you don't want to overwork something, you want to try to underwork it. And let the viewer fill it in with, his, with their imagination. It's easy to overwork things. Sometimes you put detail in one area and leave the other area um, kind of unfinished. It's always good to look at other artists' work, you know, any bookstore with a decent art book selection. You could always browse through that or you can go on the web, sure. Um, but I have a lot of art books myself. I think they're essential and talk to other artists, see what they like, you know. Yeah, I think, uh, leave it alone for now and drop some color in next. Sometimes I use uh, what I test on, this, this is just, uh, I'm just using it as a testing ground. I might be able to use it as a, um, 
piece later on, but um, that's a character of mine, Flubby, <laughs> from uh, Plar. It's good to put water down first, and then hit it with the watercolor. Here's a little bit of orange. A little bit of orange for a flesh. I don't know, this is real loose and real fast, but you get the idea. Anything usually comes more alive with color. I like black and white a lot. I do a lot of black and white, but um, color um, really makes things come alive and look more finished. And uh, you don't even have to use the correct colors. You can make weird colors. It's kind of good to use uh, cool colors and hot colors in one piece if you can. Or monochromatic, which is a fancy word for limiting your colors. It's a good idea to limit your colors too. Don't put too many colors in because um, then it will start looking tacky, you know. Depends on what you're doing. But um, yeah, this is this paper can take it. And sometimes what you're testing on almost comes out better than what you're working on. It's got a looseness to it anyway. I like loose stuff. But it's good to master draftsmanship so you have some control. That just comes with practice. You know how you get to Carnegie Hall. Practice, practice. <laughs> just draw. Just keep drawing. I'm gonna give them like a yellowy green. Yeah. Yeah, before I was testing on paper that I wasn't working on, it's good to test on the same paper that you're working on if you can. But I'm usually too cheap to do that. But anyway. Um, color can help you focus the eye on things too. Let's see. Yeah, this is a pretty simple piece. Now, this is important to mix. These are tube watercolors. Watercolors come in cakes, dry cakes, the circular dry cakes, which I used to use, but tubes are, are even better. And they dry out, but you can reuse them again. You know, you can't really do that with acrylics. They'll just dry up and that's it. But oils you can do that with, I think. And this is like a real cartoon brain. Um, it's always good to get reference if you can get it, you know, get it off the web or a book, or a magazine. Um, this is a start, you know, it's a real quick uh, color reproduction of that concept. See, here's Flubby. I can put a, make him have a little volume by putting a little uh, tonality on, on the side. And the light source is coming from the left. So it gives him volume, makes him more dimensional. It gives that illusion of dimension, even though it's just flat stuff on paper. But um, I wanted to show this. This is a one of my latest... Uh, you know, doodles. Um, see, this is just... This is kind of a surreal piece where his head is on fire. You know, he's like a... It's like an ADD thing, you know? Um, it's a surreal kind of piece where his head is just burning up. And this one, I would keep the background white. 
and build the colors up a little bit and build this up more contrast first drop in more of a wash and then go over it with some cross hatching and it will pop more and get more uh, defined you know that would think just keep drawing and keep practicing and have fun with it don't try to be a perfectionist there's no such thing as perfectionism just have fun with it you know and write down ideas and images as you think of them I keep envelopes in my pocket a lot when I don't have a sketch pad for even just a list of what to do but uh, um, it's good to uh, write it down before you uh, forget it anyway keep drawing and uh, see you some other time another video one of these days